remember for this one, when I say, guys, our question is asking, how can we solve or how can we find the solutions to our, to our functions, right? We're trying to find the value of x, okay? So remember, guys, if I have something like, uh, you guys remember like factoring, and I've you know I've gone through this over and over. But remember, guys, factoring, you can't when we have more than one x on the same side, and ex and um, you're gonna have to look at some kind of factoring term. We're using the zero product property. Here, I factor this to x plus two times x plus one equals zero, and then what we use is remember the zero product property, saying that if you have two um, two numbers, binomials, whatever that multiply two products. Our product that equals zero, then one of them has to equal zero. So we say that x plus two equals zero and x plus one equals zero. That's the exact same thing here. A lot of students, almost everybody wants to do this, which is very innate. You guys get used to it. But then again, you get stuck. You're like, what do I do from here? Well, there's really nothing you can do from here, right? Because if I gave you a problem, x squared plus x equals zero, and I said solve for x, the first thing you'd have to do is you'd say factor out, right? You always want to factor out what they have in common. So you'd factor out the x anyways and get back to where we started. So what we have is we have two products. Where we have a product that equals zero. So what it's already factored for you. So all you guys need to do is just solve sine of x equals zero and sine of x plus one equals zero. Yes, question? Oh my gosh. Can you just shoot me before I die at the end of the day? Oh, we'll do that. Then we have sine of x equals negative 1. So now we have two solutions. I have when does, when is my x? Remember, what is the solution of your x? Your solution of your x is your value, right? What is that, what is that angle value when I have your undivided attention? What is that angle value of x for sine at 0 and at negative 1? Well, when I go and look at it in my brain, or for those of you guys that don't have it all the way up there, you can still look down on the unit circle. We say, remember, the sine is your y-coordinate, right? And your y-coordinate, when your y-coordinate is 0, is going to be at these two points, right? Which your two angles would be at, um, you know, like 0 and pi. Right? That's when y sine equals 0. <laughs> then you say, when does sine equal negative 1? Well, that's down there, right? And what is that angle? 3, 5. 3, 5, or 2. So if I need to find my answers here, what I'll do is I'll say x equals, rather than saying, like I said, guys, you could say x equals 0 plus 2 pi. You could say x equals pi plus 2 pi, right? But again, you're being redundant. If you just say x plus x equals pi, I'm sorry, x equals, yeah, pi n. With n equals 0, you have the 0 degree, or 0 angle. When you have n equals 1, you have pi. When n equals 2, it's going to go down to 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9 pi, 10 pi, 5 pi. It's going to keep on going around and around depending on what your n is, right? So you get, so by just doing n, you get all of your intervals. You don't need to say 0 plus 2 pi and pi plus 2 pi. You can just add pi and you'll get both those answers, okay? The next one, x would equal 3 pi over 2, but then that one you could add plus 2 pi, and one divide by 2 pi n. Because your first angle is here, then if you want to get to the next one, you add another 2 pi. Get to the next point, add another 2 pi. Make sense? Okay. Yep.